This Windows on Windows episode is a continuation of a previous video titled Using Windows 7 After End of Support and is designed to educate those users who are wishing to remain with Windows 7 on some more advanced strategies that they can put into place easily in order to maximise their computer security and their safety going forward in the absence of official security patches by Microsoft. If you have not yet watched the previous video, I strongly recommend that you do so and I will provide an information card in the top right corner of the video for you to do this now. So without further ado, let's start. Number 7. Keep a backup. A backup is a second copy of all of your important files kept for emergency situations in which your original files are lost, modified or deleted by some malicious program. Handily, Windows 7 already includes an easy to use backup feature. Simply access the control panel, select backup and restore and then click setup backup. Follow the on screen instructions provided to create a backup. Alternatively, you may wish to use a third party backup program. I recommend Macrium Reflect, which is free and easy to use. I will provide a link to this in the video description. Please note that it is best practice to store any backups on a second hard drive or a USB drive in case of a mechanical issue with your current hard drive or in case of a so called ransomware attack which aims to deny you access to the files on your current hard drive until a ransom is paid. Number 8. Enable user account control and set it to maximum. Starting with Windows Vista, the version of Windows before Windows 7, Microsoft has included a feature known as user account control that is enabled by default and designed to protect the user and operating system from malicious programs. User account control intercepts every program that tries to open on your computer and asks the user to confirm if they want the program to actually run or not. If you are not sure if user account control is enabled on your system, or if it is enabled but you're not sure if it's set to its maximum settings, simply access control panel, choose user accounts, then click change user account control settings. Drag the slider in this window all the way to the top and then press OK. Then simply restart your computer to confirm the changes. Number 9. Switch to a standard user account. Windows includes two types of user accounts, administrator accounts which have full access to the operating system and standard accounts which are more limited. If you are currently logged on as an administrator, it is possible for a malicious program to take advantage of your access to the operating system to execute some malicious code. However, switching to a standard user account can help to prevent this from happening. To do this, again access the control panel and choose user accounts. Underneath your username and picture, check for either administrator or standard user. If you are an administrator, click on manage another account, create a new account and select administrator. Type an account name and click create account. Then click on the account you just created and choose create a password. Enter a strong password and then click create password. Next, log off. At the login screen, choose the new administrator account you just created. Type in the password and log in. Now, access control panel again and click user accounts. Then, manage another account, but this time select your original account. Click on change the account type and select standard user. Finally, press change account type to confirm the changes. Now, whenever any program attempts to run on your original Windows account, you will be prompted to enter the password for the administrator account that you just created. This password will always be required before any program can run, thus helping to prevent malicious programs from running without your knowledge or permission. Please note that for this to work, the administrator account does not need to be logged in. Number 10. Keep all programs up to date. Whilst many tasks are these days accomplished via a web browser, it is possible that older versions of other programs installed on your computer could pose a security risk. Therefore, it is important to keep these programs up to date. An easy way to check for and automatically install program updates is to use a dedicated software updater program, such as Patch My PC Updater. 
I will provide a link to download this free program in the video description. Once downloaded, simply open the program and select Perform Updates. All available updates for your programs will then be installed. Number 11. Encrypt your hard disk. Encryption is a technology that protects your files and information by converting them into unreadable code that cannot be easily deciphered by unauthorized people or programs. Windows 7 Professional, Enterprise and Ultimate Editions all include access to Microsoft's own BitLocker Drive Encryption. Simply access Control Panel, choose BitLocker Drive Encryption and then click Turn BitLocker On for all of your hard drives. Alternatively, or if you run Windows 7 Starter, Home Basic or Home Premium Edition, you can use a free third-party encryption program such as VeraCrypt, which again I will provide a link to in the video description. Number 12. Use the Tor Browser Tor is a web browser designed to maximise user security and privacy. It is based on the Firefox web browser and comes preloaded with a few extensions all designed to protect you while browsing online. You may wish to switch to this browser if you are particularly privacy conscious. However, please be aware that because of the nature of how Tor works, browsing with this browser is slightly slower than with other web browsers. However, you may find this an acceptable compromise for increased security and peace of mind. Number 13. Access the internet via an anti-malware DNS server. Whilst I will not go into detail on exactly what DNS servers are or how they work in this video, you can think of a DNS server like a security guard or bouncer. The DNS server will check all websites you attempt to access from your browser against a database of known malicious websites, and will ensure that the website you are trying to access is safe before allowing you to visit. To set this up, right click on your internet connection icon in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, then choose Open Network and Sharing Center. Near the middle of this screen you will see Connections, followed by the name of your network in blue text. Click this, then choose Properties from the box that appears. Now scroll down and choose Internet Protocol version TCP slash IPv4 and click Properties. In the new box that appears, choose Use the following DNS server addresses and enter the number 9 in each section of the preferred DNS server box. When you're finished, you should see 9.9.9.9. .9 Press OK, OK again, and then finally close. Note that there are many DNS servers that offer this service, including the one I have used here as an example. I will again provide a link in the video description to a web page containing a list of servers you may wish to use. I hope this second video has also been helpful in alleviating some of your potential fears around running an unsupported version of Windows. If you have any further questions, please let me know in the comments below, and I, or one of the other members of the Windows on Windows community, will be happy to help. But again for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.